Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. So today we're going to be looking at the muscles of the shoulder, the arm, and the forearm. We're not really going to be talking about the hands, but there's a lot going on in the shoulder, arm, and forearm. Um, so a lot to label here. So first we're going to look at the shoulder and the arm. So everything around the humerus here and up here in the shoulder. And then we'll look at everything around the forearm. I'm just playing through this video here. Um, so the different angles I'm showing. Uh, so here's inside of your arm here. So there'd be the subscapularis. We go down, there's the biceps. And then here's the uh, forearm muscles as we go down through. So we're going to label all of these in here. And then just the different orientations we have of the arm here in this video. Just spinning it around so you can see it in multiple different ways. Again, the purpose of these videos is so that you can pretend you're with this model without having to be in the actual lab to use the model. Um, so feel free to play this over and over again as you're trying to guess the muscles. Well, you shouldn't be guessing the muscles. You're just naming the muscles. All right. So going back to the start here, as soon as it unfreezes, it'll happen in a second. Um, but let's pull up my drawing tool here. So let's start labeling right away. Uh, first part here. Let's go right here. All right, a couple lines I want to draw. This one we've named before in previous vi videos, but right there would be the deltoid. This is where the pectoralis major comes in. So those ones are just orienting ourselves with where we are on this model. So now right here we have the triceps as the uh, posterior side of our arm. Uh, so there is the triceps has three heads. We can label two right here. Right here is the lateral head. And then right here would be the long head. The medial head is deep in here but we can see it when we flip the arm over on the other side and now over here we have two different muscles the one everyone knows is this one this is the biceps brachii but then this one in here this is called the brachy brachialis so these are the ones i wanted to label on this image right now again forearm comes later later uh so right now we're just focused on these ones so right here again this is the deltoid this is pectoralis major Again, apologies if you can't read my writing. Right here, this one's triceps. So triceps, long head. Right here would be triceps, uh, lateral head. This would be the lateral aspect. And then the medial head we'll get to later. Uh, right here, this one is the brachialis going down through here. brachialis, and then biceps brachii. So biceps brachii, not just biceps. We now add that brachii term to it. So that's this first part here. And now moving on to the next version. So I'm going to clear this now and we're going to continue through the video. I do go to the forearm here. We'll come back to that. But now I flip it over and we look at this aspect of the arm about right there is good. All right, so right now we can see this deep shoulder muscle here. So this is right on the uh, subscapular fossa right there. So it's called the subscapularis. Uh, right here, we then have the latissimus dorsi coming in. So this is where the back muscle comes in. Right here then would be the biceps brachii. So right here is one head. And then right here is the other head, but we'll just label them both as biceps brachii. And then right here is where we can see that medial head of the triceps. And then we have two other muscles right here. Um, so this is the other part of the triceps. But this one right here is a different muscle, one we haven't named yet. So right here is the biceps. But then this connects up here to the coracoid process. And then this uh, muscle here connects down to the brachial region. So this is the coracobrachialis muscle. So let's fill all these in right now. So right there is biceps brachii. Now we labeled that last time, but just to put us in orientation here. And again, when you're trying to remember this, try to start with a muscle you know, then work your way around from there, trying to name the other part. So this is triceps. And then this is the medial one. Right here is the uh, coracobrachialis. Don't confuse that with the brachial brachialis. <laughs> so it c goes to the coracoid process. Oops, there we go. 
And then right here, this is the connection to the latissimus dorsi. And then right here, this is the subscapularis, since we didn't get a good actual model image of that in our last video. So subscapularis. Uh, all right, so yeah, those are the main ones of the arm and shoulder. Uh, so combine the shoulder. The shoulder was kind of broken up into this video and the previous video where we did chest and back. We talked about some of the sits muscles and the rotator cuff muscles there as well. So combine those two and then you get a full shoulder. So going erasing this part now, we can then move forward and move down to the forearm. Now this is where things can get a little complex. So we're going to go back here to this part right here. Um, now there's going to be a lot of lines drawn here, just as a warning. And there's a lot of different parts to the forearm. Uh, so let's see here. Let's start out with these three right here as we work our way down. First one on the outside here, we're going to label this one twice when we look at this position and then when we flip the arm over. So right here, this is the brachioradialis. Right inside the brachioradialis, we have the extensor carpi radialis longus. And then it's the extensor carpi radialis brevis. So it's shorter than the long one. Now, uh, this one right here, this big one coming down the middle, you can see it connects to all these. Probably shouldn't draw that in yellow, but I'll erase those, just highlighting where these tendons go. So don't only look at the muscle, look at the tendons they attach to. So this one attaches to all the digits. So this one's called extensor digitorum. It extends the digits. That one makes sense naming wise. Then we have this little one right here. This is the abductor pollicis longus. Whenever you see the word pollicis in a muscle, it goes to the thumb. And this one abducts the thumb. And then we have the extensor pollicis brevis. That's that one right there. And then this muscle, this tendon right here, goes to a muscle underneath here. That is then the um, extensor pollicis longus. So longus, brevis, and then abductor pollicis longus. All these are pollicis, all these go into the thumb, but they have different names. Told you, it gets confusing. But we're not done here, two more. Um, we have this one on the outside, the extensor carpi ulnaris. So remember, pinky side, that's where the ulna is. So extensor carpi ulnaris. And then we have this little one here that goes down the pinky. Remember the pinky is the minimi. And if it's moving the pinky, it's extending the pinky. Pinky's a digit, this is the extensor uh, digit minimi. Um, so let's write all these in. <laughs> so here we have uh, the first one, brachioradialis. This one, next one in is then extensor carpi radialis longus. So I'm just going to write ECR. So extensor carpi radialis longus. And then extensor carpi radialis brevis. Then this one right here is extensor digitorum. Digitorum. Now this one, little one right here, we have abductor pollicis longus. Abductor pollicis longus. There are two longus, so I'll go ahead and label the other longus. This one up here is extensor pollicis longus, so extensor or abductor. So does it extend or abduct? Remember, the thumb can make multiple movements because of that saddle joint. So here we have extensor pollicis longus. And then this one is extensor pollicis brevis. Sorry if this isn't too legible, but brevis, abductor longus, extensor longus. Alrighty, now on this other side here, remember we have extensor carpi ulnaris. And then the last one here going to the pinky is extensor digiti digit minimi. A minimi. So minimi going to the little finger going to a, a digit. All right, so that is that angle on the forearm. So moving on now, I know there's a lot right there. Now we get to go to the, uh, well, 
an anatomical position, this would technically be the anterior side of the forearm. So let's move forward now. So we have to jump through that one again. And there we are. So a lot more to label here too. So we have this one going in right there. That is the pronator teres that allows for pronation. Right here, we have the flexor carpi radialis. This one right here then is the palmaris longus. This one goes to the palm. I'll talk about that when we label it so that you can see that one going up to the palm and it's long, so palmaris longus. We already labeled this one over here. This is the brachioradialis again. Just wanted to orient yourself where it is. Right here, there's a muscle. This one is the flexor pollicis longus. So we just had the extensor pollicis longus. On the other side, we would have the um, flexor one. This tendon goes up and up the thumb then. Um, and then over here, uh, we have this muscle right on the outside. This one is the flexor uh, carpi ulnaris. And then the big one underneath here, a little bit more deep, even though it says superficialis in the name, um, it is under these tendons right here is the flexor digitorum superficialis. And these ones have all these little tendons that go up all the digits then. So let's label all these then. So right here, starting with the brachioradialis. Brachioradialis, right here, pronator teres. Then this one right here, the flexi carpi radialis. Next one right beside that is the palmaris longus. So again, we see that one going down here to the retiniculum. So palmaris longus, and then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. along the ulna. So we have an um, extensor cal carpi ulnaris and a flexor carpi ulnaris. Uh, and then we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. Digitorum superficialis. So here you can see all these little tendons going up here, which go to all the digits. And then one last one right here is the flexor pollicis longus. And boom, all the muscles of the forearm. Okay, so that's all the ones I'm gonna label here. Note that all these rubber bands, we're holding this model together as I was turning around, but there are deep muscles under the rubber bands, just not the extent of this video today. We can switch over to 3D Organon for a bit here, like I've done in other videos, and show these in a little bit more detail um, and spin it around so we can see the organization. So here we have the deltoid, uh, so we hide the deltoid there. Now we can see again all the rotator cuff muscles right in there. Right here is the triceps, the lateral and the long head. And then down there we see the medial head of the triceps. Uh, right here would be the biceps brachii. We see the two heads coming up here to the coracoid process. And right here we can see the brachy, uh, yeah, the brachialis. And then if we go on the inside here, in deep in there is the corico brachialis again connecting to that coracoid process of the scapula as well uh, so if we hide the biceps brachii we can see that coracobrachialis right in there uh, and then remember so if we hide the triceps right back here is that where the latissimus dorsi comes in and then down there is the medial head as well so now let's bring everything back and let's look at the forearm so forearm starting on this side back here right there's the flexi carpi ulnaris uh, extensor carpi ulnaris. Uh, we didn't talk about the aconius on the model, but it's right there. Extensor digiti, digiti minimi. I think I forgot uh, an I on um, my labeling earlier. So make sure it's, you write digiti. Uh, there's the digitorum there. You can see the tendons and how they go to each tendon. So that's one you want to orient yourself on. You can see all those tendons on the model. So extensor digitorum. And then here are the ones where we go around, uh, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, and then right there is the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis brevis, and then the extensor pollicis uh, longus. And then right here is uh, the, the extensor carpi radialis longus, and then right there is our brachioradialis. I like to orient myself with the brachioradialis. It's a big one coming down 
the inside, well, lateral side right there in anatomical position. And then right there is that pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus. Again, you see that one coming down to the palm region. And then this is the one that connects all the digits, flexor digitorum superficialis. And then right here, the flexi carpi ulnaris again. Again, we're not worried about the hand muscles uh, too much here, but know that they do exist. I just um, not including them on the practical portion of this exam. So consider yourself lucky because they're pretty complex down there. We're just, um, Maybe we'll get into them later, but not in this exam. So those are the muscles of the arm and the shoulder. Just wanted to show them to you spinning, spinning them around on 3D organon. But when I give the practical, they're going to be labeled on the models, not on a nice 3D organon anatomy here where you can spin them all around, remove them, and so forth. Uh, so make sure you study those models. Make sure you do your worksheets, and you should do well here. But that's all I have for this uh, video. Next video is going to be going over the muscles of the hip and the leg uh, and the thigh and the leg. Uh, so if we can get the arm down, we can get the leg down too, because it kind of all falls into place around the leg region and thigh. So with that, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.